thank you guys for joining us today. We have Ron Seitz, President and CEO of Fighter Country Partnerships at Luke Air Force Base, and his friend and my friend, John Pearson, Managing Director, JLL. Kind of a big deal. Not really. Really? Not as big as Ron. Really? Not Should we start with Ron then? Yeah. No, deal. we just all walked around as humble servants. Oh, that yeah. was sweet. He's a big deal. He's don't, a big deal. Don't <laughs> stop that. <laughs> but I was excited when I was approached with the idea of living in the West Valley my whole life, right? And I have lived near the base forever, family in the military, private pilot, so kind of like near it, but not in it. And then I met Ron. YMCA. Oh my gosh, yeah. how long ago was that? I didn't know you were a pilot. Yes. I never knew that. Yes, and I had to have a booster seat for that too. Okay. Yeah. No, but yeah, we met YMCA back YMCA. in the day when you were doing uh, The Biggest Loser in the yes. West Valley. Yes, yes. Running some of it out of the facility. And then when you went to fighter country, that's when I first heard about it. Several years passed, and then I get in the commercial real estate business in Arizona specifically, moved back home, and you're still there. It's a huge program now beyond just the air show. It does all these other things. And then I started to learn how much this industry was tied into it. So we'll get there, but tell all the people out there that were like me. I've heard of it. I kind of know what it is. I know what the base is. What is it? Yeah, I, I was kind of the same way. I mean, you know, um, 11 years ago, uh, I, t I took my first day of employment on September 11th, 2010. Did that on purpose. Um, I was, you know, a YMCA executive running that flagship branch two and a half miles down the street. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody knows what, what Luke is, you know, but, but all we see is plain fence and pilot. We don't have that that access inside the fence until mm -hmm. we become a, a very fortunate. All of us have been honorary commanders at Luke Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. After my honorary commander term was over, um, my predecessor took a position with APS. And so I got, had the opportunity to get hired by fighter country and I jumped all over it. And so really the, the, there's no elevator speech as to who we are and what we do, but we're kind of like a, a secret service nonprofit, right? Like mm -hmm. a YMCA or a boys and girls club. We're, we're a nonprofit entity inside the fence, providing programs and services um, for all the airmen and military members at Luke Air Force Base. And we say military members because it's not just airmen. You know, there's Navy, there's Marines, mm -hmm. uh, there's reserves on the base. So there's a huge uh, demographic of military members out at Luke. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all of our programs are around morale and well-being and culture and tradition. Mm -hmm. so, um, and so, you know, when you're in the elevator with somebody and you only have 30 <laughs> seconds, we'll say, well, you know, we fund uh, autism camps or we'll do a, a half a million dollar renovation of a fire station. Right. You just and everything do what's between. needed. That's yeah, what I've it's, observed. It's That's the need of the day. Yeah. So it's just uh, it, it what it has become is, is has, has blown me away. It's blown everybody away. No, mm -hmm. Nobody has envisioned this organization becoming what it's become now because it's just the things that we get to do inside the fence of an active duty military installation, it doesn't happen at this capacity anywhere else in the country. Okay, give us one or two examples of what does that mean? So I, I always, when we're providing education and awareness tours on the base, which you guys are going to get in a couple weeks, uh -huh. one of the things that we always love to show people is, is as I'm showing you, these, these, are, these are... They look very these official. Are, these are... <laughs> Approved gift letters um, from the Department of Defense. Oh, that's what so it's whether special. it's a forty-two hundred dollar approved gift for two pallets of Gatorade mm -hmm. for a hydration program that we do for all the maintainers on the flight line. Favorite that, thing about the military, the official names. It's not. Can yeah. we get Gatorade? It's we have a hydration program. Yeah, and and thanks to our friends out at Tolleson Gatorade in PepsiCo, at Steve Jones, shout out honorary commander, incoming Blue Blazer. Every month they give us two full pallets of Gatorade. Just, just because they love us. That's awesome. Um, so not notice that letter. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a little templated gift letter from the Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. This this is a $925,000 gift letter for an Honor Guard facility that we're working on right now. They look strikingly familiar, except they, you didn't use the colored font when you hit print. Right. They look exactly the same because, you know, it, it's just a gift and the Air Force is appreciative of it. But mm -hmm. this is what nobody else in the country is doing. Mm. Is these and, and, and is these? This is what makes us so proud. Is on approved letterhead from the Department of the Air Force. We're we're doing things inside the fence that nobody else is doing. So there's cool stuff that we get access to, and I'm gonna jump over to John real quick. When I became more so a blue blazer than an honorary commander, I really started to see the people that have been involved for years and years and years and years. 
and your involvement was, it was you and Kirsten Hall that stood out to me a lot. And just, you weren't just involved, you were, you were in it, like you were bleeding the base. How did that come to be for you? Uh, <clears throat> it's really interesting. I, I, in, I, I'd gone through uh, a tenure with the Fiesta Bowl for 13 years and was looking for something new. And a, and a good friend, Rick Dirks, I, I saw him posting or speaking of involvement at the base and always had a huge admiration for military members, never, you know, been a party to any of it, but just really admired them. And mm -hmm. and I, and here's Rick doing this. And I said, Rick, what are you doing? And how'd you get involved? And he said, well, there's this great honorary commander program that you go through and I can get you an application or I can get you to the people who can get an application. The It happens every two years. And I filled out my application and crickets like I you know mm -hmm. got nothing and I was like mm -hmm. gosh you know two years later I was just you start like, doing more push-ups I'm, I'm out like, there I got I'm this. getting a little more involved I'm like you know Rick I, I I still see you're active and what's going on I really want to get involved and he's like well you know do the application again it's a limited group of people that get it and so I did it again and and I look at those letters right there and I, I still have my letter <laughs> of acceptance mm -hmm. you know from it's the exciting. general of the, you know, saying you've been accepted into this program. And <clears throat> the uh, the difference for me was, you know, uh, not having, I, I'm in commercial office. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about, you know, the West Phoenix, which really is not known for sure. commercial office. We're trying to change that. Yeah, it, well, <laughs> and it is changing <laughs> in, in a fast way. But to Ron's point, you know, when you live on the West Side, everybody talks about the base, yes. and when you don't, Mm -hmm. Nobody does. And so getting involved and starting to see what was going on was just enlightening to me. Mm -hmm. And the honorary commander program being a two year program went through that. And that and that's the transition mm -hmm. to the Blue Blazer and Fighter Country Foundation programs. You have to go through the honorary commander, which is, you know, a military program and we're a civilian program. So anyway, the going through that uh, was incredible, working with different commanders at the base and the logistics program and and getting involved and and um, from there it was just about being present and just you know for me just showing up to as much as I could and mm -hmm. trying to get involved and and uh, it's just been remarkable so that was you know from 2014 to 2016 and going through the program and then here I am you know 2021 and I'm part of the leadership group and it's mm -hmm. phenomenal that's awesome yeah what I was so shocked is the amount of access that we're given. So to give an example, when you're in the honorary commander program, you go to an overnight in Gila Bend and you just, I mean, it was just nonstop is of just, just display after display, even into the night. And I remember um, Chris Camacho was in my group and it's just kind of like one of those things that it doesn't matter what you do for a living. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters anymore. Your titles are gone. You're just in the middle of the desert, understanding how these men and women protect our country. And there is just like the patriotism you feel, it's like shivers up your spine. It's so humbling. I got chills. I did too. I literally, it's, and- It's the Kool-Aid oh. Kool in the veins. We all, we all have it. You're so proud. I yeah. don't know how you can't be proud. And it's fun for me, having grown up by the base and hearing the sound of freedom, right? <laughs> um, and with the 35s, you hear the sound of freedom a little louder. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna stop myself. I cannot believe after 11 years, you still get this emotional I, about the I program. I can't help it. He's literally it. tearing yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, know, I can't help it. It's Where just, does that come it's from? Incredible. Like how, how, how after how, so how long? How do we get to do this stuff? I mean, that that's literally where it comes from is we're, it, it's the terminology we use. We are not privileged in any way, shape, or form. We're not exclusive in any way, shape, or form. We are just incredibly humble and fortunate to get to do what we do. But nobody gets to do this stuff. Yeah. And... That's where we have these sensitive conversations is, you know, you asked me some of these questions earlier is how do people get involved? And it's it's hard. It's not easy to let everybody be a part of it because we're doing things inside the fence mm -hmm. where there's an M16 at the front door. Right. So you have to operate differently. Mm -hmm. So we get phone calls all the time of, hey, I, I see your website. I want to be a part of what you guys do. And it's really difficult especially coming from the YMCA background where we got thousands and thousands of volunteers that help us with, with programs. Yeah. We take these phone calls and say, thank you so much for your call, but I'm sorry. We, we there, There's no way for you to support us because we're inside the fence of an active duty military installation where we're providing programs and services. So to be involved in our organization, mm -hmm. you must be somebody who's gone through the honorary commander program right? because they've been vetted by the DOD and 
they're trusted by the leadership at Luke Air Force Base. Right. So, so we're just by default, we can't let everybody in. Mm-hmm. So it makes it very difficult. So, so we are so fortunate. And we're, it's a select few that get the honor of doing what we get to do. So it's a big responsibility. Absolutely. So you Three years later, even when I drive on the base, the fact that the department gave me a base pass, I don't feel worthy, right? Like right. you just, you feel the commitment that everyone on that base has made their whole lives, their whole careers. And from all over the world, we're training pilots from all over the world. And you're just like, how am I allowed to drive my car? It's just, you do feel that sense. Of, it's very, 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 very humbling. And, and you take it incredibly seriously. Absolutely. Because you're right. We're, when you're inside the fence, ranks are stripped. It's what you do for one, you do for all. Mm-hmm. Um, there is there is no privilege inside the fence. Mm-hmm. It is, and um, and 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 we're just, again, we're so spoiled with with the people who support us because they're incredible human beings. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me this then. So. I really think if I look back, when I was one of those little girls that for some reason when the air show would happen at Luke Air Force Base, we always parked outside the fence. And I don't know why. My whole family's in aviation. You'd think like we would be there at the crack of dawn front row, but we didn't. I don't know why. So it wasn't until I was an honorary commander that I was actually on base for the air show. And one year, and then the next year was in the general's tent where you had the music and the everything. But that was the day that the world gets to step foot on the base. How do you do that? Why do you do that? When do you do that? Tell us why the air show exists. Why do we get to come on at that point? All those things. So for, for the military, air shows is like their number one recruiting tool. Ah. Um, so it's a, it's a big, big deal for, mm-hmm. for, for the military. And then obviously for the state, you know, the largest one-day event in the state of Arizona is the Super Bowl. The largest two-day event in the state of Arizona is Luke Day's. It is insane. It's huge. It's large. Um, it's massive. So you get 325, 350,000 people over two days. And um, it's it's a huge, amazing, awesome display. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I can't tell you how many stories I've heard of, of, of individuals in the Air Force signed up because of air shows they went to when they were kids. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are always cool stories to hear. Us, from an organizational role, um, we we take a significant role and, and, and to help enhance, and that's another one of those terminology uh, the words that we use. You know, we don't use words like improve because mm-hmm. improve implies like something's bad. No, uh, we're there to support and enhance. Mm-hmm. So we play a very large role in enhancing the air show, and we retain the services uh, from our good friends uh, at Barrett Jackson or uh, the individual Casey McDonald who puts on Barrett Jackson, the Arabian Horse Show. You know, people who are very good at what they do. Mm-hmm. Uh, they take care of the ground show operations. Okay. And you know, let's let the Air Force be the Air Force, right? And the Air what Force, a the Air Force oversees the majority of the air show. Yeah. And combined, it becomes a beautiful um, marriage there. Yeah, and and also, it, and it's not done like this. So go go figure, right? Luke is always the the pilot, pun intended, uh-huh. the pilot for programs. This is all, for for air shows that are on an active duty military installation. Mm-hmm. This is the only one in the country that's operated in this fashion, mm-hmm. where they where they allow in a non governmental entity, i.e., Fighter Country Foundation, to lease the installation for the days of the air show. Mm-hmm. So that we can bring in all those amenities like mm. Ruth Chris Steakhouse and, and 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 very nice food vendors, so that it complements the awesomeness that's up in the air. I, I can't believe how much the air show has changed in the last you know four, it's, it's every other year if I yep. remember correctly. And then COVID, did we change the schedule up at all or what happened? Twice, there? twice we've had to cancel, Oof. you know, postpone uh, the air show twice. We were we were seven days away in 2020, seven days away, and had to pull the plug. Uh, but March 1920, no, 2021, uh, what, uh, for, for calendar year 2022, the air show is March 19th and 20th, I believe. Okay. Whatever that Saturday and mm-hmm. Sunday is. So we're still in spring training during that time, right? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, it'll, be, so it'll be busy. Oh, my gosh. The amount of people that come into this town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so a question for you, John. Being in commercial real estate, your time is everything, right? If you don't, If you're not doing what you do you're not making a living and you put so much time into this. Have you been able to bridge those two worlds together in any way, shape or form from the business perspective? You know, not 
Not tremendously, and that was never the goal of right. it, too. You know, it, it, there's there's events you get involved in that are, are networking, um, and there's events you get involved with that are pas- that you have a passion for, mm-hmm. and and this is the latter. So it's uh, you know the fact that the, the the real estate world is growing out uh, well beyond Luke Air Force Base now mm-hmm. is is fantastic, and I I know all the developers and. You know, I don't I don't work in the industrial world, but they're surrounding the base, and and mm-hmm. and so to be educated on that is great. It's a nice benefit Good for point. for what I do, but mm-hmm. it's not it's not a driver by any means. Um, and as the office market continues to grow, and we'll do definitely do more and more on on the the, the west side, that it, it, it'll be nice. But it's um, this is. The amount of time you spend there is, is so easy to justify. I know. <laughs> I know. I know that. I, I mean, it's, all those simulators and just being near the thirty-five, like oh, you ju- it's yeah. The coolest when thing. you're driving on the base and you're you know thirty feet from, you know, warming up F-16s and F-35s, that you're just the, the engine is just roaring right next to you. You're kind of like, what? Oh, what am I doing? So cool. what is, how how, how am I here? What is yeah, going yeah. on? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Am I lost? Right? So anyway, it. Uh, it's remarkable, and, and unfortunately, we've we've had restrictions with COVID, yeah. and we haven't been able to do as much on base. And everybody is just eager to get back and have our our meetings on the base, mm-hmm. and and you know, um, practically be on the tarmac for our meetings at the you know fire station with the doors rolled up and the jet sitting right ah! next to you, and it's just like what? So I mean, that's just great stuff, and 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 that, and you're arm in arm next to the the general or the chief, and mm-hmm. you're. Just the, these are people that are remarkable. I mean, mm-hmm. been through several generals. You know, every two years they they roll in and out of the base, and every one of them is just the most remarkable individual I've ever met. Like, it's, it's shocking incredible. how much of them stay in Arizona. How many of them stay in Arizona? Just leadership in general. <clears throat> it seems like it's their last. A lot of times when I was talking to them, you would know that better than I would. Well, I, that's actually when we're. When we're doing our education awareness tours, that's one of the things we, we talk about is, you know, our, our, our primary goal is, is programs and services. But but right behind it is doing everything we can to keep those families here. I mean, mm-hmm. those are good households to Absolutely. have, number one. But, but so when a military family is retiring, the, the first decision they always make is family. Where are we going to retire to? Mm-hmm. Close to family. The second decision they typically make is what installation do they want to be nearby? Uh, Luke happens to be in a very nice location, the fifth mm-hmm. largest metropolitan area. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is a very nice destination to be. So when those military members come here and they're stationed at Luke and, and they see how this community supports the base and then and then being in Phoenix itself, mm-hmm. it, that's, that's a deciding factor most of the time. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. And it's easy because everybody's from somewhere else. Right? Yeah. <laughs> You're mm-hmm. not an outlier. I mean, I, I've already seen it with our current chief on the base is, is, you know, four or five months ago, he wasn't sure he wasn't sure. And the longer he stays stationed here at Luke, like, oh, oh, yeah, no, they're finding a way to stay here. Oh, and the funny thing is it, it seems like most of them roll in in July, right? I mean, yep. I, and so they come in and their, you know, their first few months are, I'm, what have I done? What am I doing here? Mm-hmm. And after their, you know, 18th month they're just going how do i find a way to stay here mm. you know and and you know a lot of them do have to transfer out and go you know their orders will take them wherever and they'll have to go there and some of them will come back for another stint and it, the ones that i've talked to that have come back have just been like I, i'm so glad to be back <laughs> like it's really amazing to be here and and then uh and then you see the ones that are directly involved with fighter country foundation and and when they first get here, it's, you know, not knowing who we are. They're just a little hesitant and then kind of, you know, another, you know, community support organization. Mm-hmm. And then within a year, they're like, oh, my gosh, you guys are the real deal. This is nothing like I've ever seen on any installation. So it, it makes you feel good. And, mm-hmm. and that's testament to, you know, Ron and and what he's done at the base. And, and uh, it's it, it's it makes you proud to be a part of it. Yeah, absolutely. Do you, I don't want to put you on the spot, but do either one of you remember, I've heard it two or three times, just the economic impact of the base. I don't know if you can spout that off yeah. the top of your head. But. 2.4 billion. Revenue right, to Last the state. time it was measured. And so, yeah, in, in the state of Arizona, Gauza. you have a, a, a little over 10 billion. Okay. Uh, and so between the four installations, um, Luke is at 2.4. Um, and not counting, you know, the Papago and some other military assets inside the fence or mm-hmm. inside the state. So it's a huge industry. 
um, and that's what Luke represents. And then um, Luke also controls the barium Goldwater range, mm -hmm. and all of our installations in the state would Will not. Will you exist. talk about that a little bit? That blew yeah. my mind. Yeah. So so Gila Bend, the barium Goldwater range. That's that's obviously the range where all of flight training and dropping bombs, air to air refueling, all of that training takes place, and it's. You know, the military sees that as a national treasure, mm -hmm. you know, because the amount of, of, of days they can fly because of our weather is significant. And, and the amount of real estate. It's, it's so like much 332 land. days or something like that. So so it's a massive piece of land, mm -hmm. and it provides the airspace for training. So davis Monthan trains out of there. MCAS Yuma, Marine Corps Air Station Yuma, they train out of there. how fast you can get somewhere in a gym. <laughs> right. Um, obviously, Luke trains out of there. Uh, Army National Guard with their Blackhawks. So everybody utilizes that range. Luke Air Force Base manages that, which is another huge responsibility. Um, so that's the range management office. Shout mm -hmm. out to Chaz Buchanan and his team. And they're nationally recognized for what they do down there. I mean, you've been down there. You've been down to the range to see what it does uh, up in the air. But on the ground, they, ha they have the responsibility of taking care of, of that be those beautiful lands mm -hmm. that are on, and they did, that are native lands. They, if so. you've ever gone to Rocky Point in your life, you've driven through it, right? Yeah. You see that little tanker out there, and you think, what is going on out there? But w again, going back to one of the tours that we did in the program, if you've ever gone to Rocky Point, you pass through, is it before Ajo or after where all the pretty rocks are? Just... I'm not sure. Where you pull off the bus uh, and you go back and look at all like, how they preserved the native land. Is you know what I'm talking about? I think it's just after. After. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So you, you're just, you've driven through there. It's like the, it's a different looking part of the drive, right? And you're like, what is this? This is kind of cool. And you kind of go through these rocks, but the bus <laughs> off roads <laughs> yeah. and goes down this like gnarly dirt road. Somehow we made it out alive. But just to see what they did back there, it was like you were on another planet. Yeah, all the petroglyphs yes. and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then just the tour and how they had like preserved that land back there it was really, really yeah, cool. Yeah, the range management office. And, th and this is, again, this is where we're, we're so fortunate to have the knowledge that we get because who would know this stuff? But the range management office has 12 archaeologists on staff to manage that range when they find an arrowhead from 500 BC, uh -huh. you know, or, or mm -hmm. what, it's just it's, all yes. the little things that make up Luke is just fascinating. Mm -hmm. It is. So what's next for you, John? Like, how do you, do you just stay involved in leadership or what do you do next? Where do you take it? Yeah, I, I um, you know, we're continuing to advance new programs and to do more, you know, wellness programs for challenges that the, the military is facing through, you know, COVID, you know, restrictions and keeping people isolated cause mental stress. Can and, you talk, like, go a little bit deeper into uh, that? Ron like, could probably talk a little bit better about it. what you're considering it. doing? But, or? but uh, w we, as the boots on the ground, just try to support whatever initiatives we can. And mm -hmm. so we do come up with lots of different ideas or we go, we can find ways in the business community to, to find off-site locations for some of these events or uh, just ways to 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 tie in the business community to the base uh -huh. but you you were at the most recent packing party weren't you yeah yeah, yeah mm -hmm. you were that's right yeah blazer blazer box we call it um i mean john was there with a lot of blue blazers and, mm -hmm. and we, we go to you know subaru you know the superstore surprise mm -hmm. and um you know, we ru we operate our blazer box program tell us what's in it well, it's just it's 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 food boxes mm -hmm. is one box and the other box separated is hygiene because mm -hmm. you don't want to combine the two because that would be weird. Shampoo can really make <laughs> something taste bad. Yeah, oh no. Uh, even just the scent, right? So, so they're separate packages. But we had, you know, we get forty volunteers Aww, to come down, and awesome. we pack four hundred boxes. I tried to come, and they're like, "We have enough." And I was like, yeah. "Dang it!" Yeah. I, well, but it's there's awesome, more. Though. There's always more. Okay, good. But no, but that is the challenge that we're dealing with with this pandemic. Is is everybody's kind of getting robbed of engagement. Um, it is it is hard to, but you haven't to have lost the engagement. Well, we if we have, still have the desire. That's a testament. Well, well, again, you know, that's that's the job. You know, so that's, it's our responsibility to be there. But but when we're having these security forces appreciation events at Uptown Alley, or we're having these dinner and dash date nights at Bondurant, which is now Radford Racing. It is Radford Racing. In the past, we could invite a handful of Blue Blazers to come out. And join in the appreciation. Yeah, but you're uh, limited with headcount since, now. Since March mm -hmm. of freaking 2020. Mm -hmm. That's it. We haven't been able to include individuals like you guys. We have Radford hookups. Don't worry. We can do a redo. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's, we and, like that. And, and, and those, you know, when, when John, John brought that stuff up, that's the stuff that's become the new niche for us 
in this environment is these small demographic groups where we're doing single parent nights out, single parent retreats, uh, uh, di the dinner and dash date nights. Uh, we just we just completed a marriage retreat up in Sedona in partnership with the chaplains. Um, the feedback on those has literally gotten all the way up to the chief master sergeant of the Air Force. So that's why I wanted you to go into the examples, because I think when you think of military, you think of high arching, big mission. And it's the little stuff that counts, because at the yeah. end of the day, yeah. they're humans. Yeah. Every airman is a human and they have the same problems anybody has anywhere. Yeah. So so our focus for the last 18 months has been resiliency, mm -hmm. uh, resiliency retreats um, and and targeting small groups and getting them off mm -hmm. the installation and creating positive distractions. I mean that's 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 our, that's our goal is is to create you know a positive distraction and, and keep morale high. I mean again, how do we support the base? Morale and well-being, culture and tradition, and mission sustainability. So the morale and well-being piece is incredibly important right now mm -hmm. because um, you know the stress for everybody is is high, and inside the fence, you know, it's the pandemic is. Definitely, you know, the, the requirement for vaccinations, uh, the requirement for masks. Mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, the, smaller the, groups. The, Everything yeah. feels isolating. And mm -hmm. still a big focus is, is diversity and inclusion. Mm -hmm. So you have this environment inside the fence that there's a lot of variables You're and it's constantly changing. So, mm -hmm. so the little things that we get to do have a huge impact. And I again, think that's why we want to go pack boxes, which, right? You want to do yeah, things that feel be. normal. But, what, what, but when, I get it, when we get an email back, that literally there's a response from the chief master sergeant of the Air Force to one of our chaplains mm. saying how those programs are amazing. They're and then our cameras. chaplain is literally, when, when they go through their annual awards, we've all, we've all been, again, been able to go to annual awards events, right? Very cool. And so the, the company grade officer chaplain, uh, he got he got voted, voted and ranked, racked uh, best in AETC, Air Education Training Command. And then they put him in the whole pool he was voted best in the entire Air Force. That's amazing. And a lot of that is because of the programs that we're bringing to the Given table. Given the opportunity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. That That's what makes us – everybody is is great at what they do to support their bases. Mm -hmm. They're all awesome, and their intentions are fantastic. Um, we're just more organized. We've been around longer. Mm -hmm. And Luke does the best job out of any installation about allowing – engagement mm -hmm. you know legally morally right. and ethically but they allow engagement so that we can be connected mm -hmm. and because we're connected we know where the needs are mm -hmm. and we can fill those gaps so uh, so i think ron you should talk a little bit about some of the bigger capital projects that we've done on base too because this when i came in you know you think of the government you know everything goes through their procurement process and it's just it's it's so cumbersome it's right mm -hmm. it's a beast and then, and then I get involved in this, and then you you realize that this organization has the ability to do things that are remarkable uh, on a, an active military installation. I just, it just it's, blows it's my actually, mind. It's actually it's your guys's market segment. It's your guys's fault. Yeah, high five right there. I'll take it. It's it's take it's, it. it's it's real estate <laughs> and commercial development. Um, but how and it, why? Because th that's the largest market business segment that's involved with the base. Because they're, they're they they want to know how the base is growing and and yeah. how it's called it's called uh, managed growth, mm -hmm. how the development is going on around the base. So that market segment is 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 highly in tune, all the way back from the Valley Partnership days in 01, 02. So so they're the biggest su supporting segment in our organization, right? Okay. And so as our golf tournament continued to grow. You guys have seen that thing. It's a crazy beast. Um, it raises significant amount of funds. So we, we found ourselves in 2013 sitting on a lot of cash. I hate when that happens. Right. You're you like, know, what and, do we do with all this cash? Yeah, I like that. We don't want it. We don't <laughs> want to be seen as those nonprofits that sure. are not yeah. spending, spending their resources. Right. So we had to find significant things to do. And my background is besides, you know, golf was first, Merrill Lynch was second, YMCA was third. What does the YMCA do? What do nonprofits do? What does the Phoenix Zoo do? Boys and Girls Clubs? They do capital campaigns and they build infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So I went to our board. I'm like, well, why don't we do that? I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, On well, base? You yeah, let's let's go let's go let's go fix a fire station. And and so 
So we started. It's crazy. We started doing capital projects. Uh, the the funniest part of that story was when we submitted our first legal gift letter to renovate the fire station. The the Air Force literally called us back and said, "What what what, what do you guys want?" <laughs> right. Yeah, they're like, "What yeah, do you guys where's want?" Where's the leverage like, here? We don't want anything. Well, why are you doing it? Because we want to. Because I have all this money and I don't uh, want to do with it. Okay, hold on. It took them eight months to figure out like the process on how to say yes, because while you have other, you know partnerships across the country where they're, you know, uh, mutually beneficial business relationships, sure. you know, public, 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 mm-hmm. private partnerships where they're both benefiting from something. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there's those things that exist across the country between uh, the public and the installation. What we do doesn't mm-hmm. is, is it's, it's a pure gift to the Air Force. We want to gift a $350,000 renovation of your fire station. We want to gift a $800,000 security forces guard mount room. And so we've gone from, we're well not gone from, we continue and sustain and grow our programs and services. And now we add to it facility renovation and construction on f- facilities on the base that are deemed non-mission critical. Okay. So everything associated with the F-35, of course, that's sure, going to sure, get sure. Its, due, its, its attention. Yeah. But uh, are the rooms in the child development center uh, going to get upgraded flooring? Well, maybe not. Well, we can do that. Um, and that's um, important because w- when you're, when people are given money, they're like, uh, the first thing they're like, why isn't the government paying doing this. for this? Yes. Why aren't they doing this? And that's the mission critical comment that Ron has, which is so important if it's not mission critical. Right. It's on the list. It's just down the list. And we're just going to take it and do it now. And and we're talking forty years. Some of these things have not <laughs> been been done. You know. Well, yeah. You look at Luke Air Force Base again to tie into you know. 19- it's a lot of kid funk. <laughs> yeah. 1941, right? So so the base is old. Yeah. And one thing that's unique about Luke is unlike other installations who have gone through BRAC, right? Mm-hmm. Branch realignment and closure, is mm-hmm. other installations across the country have lost certain aspects of their mission. Mm-hmm. So it's opened up facilities. So they mm-hmm. have inventory. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Luke's mission has never changed. They've been here since 1941 to train the world's greatest fighter pilots. Those facilities are old, you know, and 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 they. And you'd think love. that'd be mission critical, right? I mean, yeah. But, so they keep them clean. Don't get me wrong. It's not like we when we walked into the fire station, it wasn't clean. It was immaculate. But I remember Chief Horseman was the chief at the time. He was stationed at the fire station in 1993. As a young airman. Mm-hmm. And then, he, then he fast forward to 2013, he's the chief of the fire station. So awesome story. But he could literally point to a ceiling tile that had a stain same, on same, it. Yeah, the same, same roof leak. <laughs> he could point to a carpet that had a, a rip in it. It's like that was here in 93. So th- that, that was kind of the messaging, which was very easy for us. Is like, well, we municipalities take care of the fire stations. Why don't we go in and take care? So, and that directly impacts the airmen, right? That, oh my that's gosh. their quality oh, the of flight life. line kitchens. I mean, yeah. that's a p- perfect example. Yeah, flight line. Yeah, it's it, amazing. It, uh, it, it, it was it, outdoor. I mean, like literally, they work on the tarmac, and their lunch break is walking to an outdoor seating you, area for lunch. Oof. You would you would drive past <laughs> the the little cafe where they can pick up a, a quick, very inexpensive lunch. So mm-hmm. it so it's a huge benefit to the airmen, right? Matter of fact, that cafe again, inside information, <laughs> it's not allowed to make money. Ah. If if they make money, they get demerits. So mm-hmm. it's supposed mm-hmm. to be as affordable as possible. Um, so these airmen can come off the flight line and get a great huge lunch Mm -hmm. that's incredibly inexpensive but they were going to their car and eating it with their air conditioning on right they just need to retrieve i'm sure because the the pavilion yeah the pavilion for them to eat was an open outdoor pavilion oh so that's awesome so now inside please tell me with air conditioning yeah for us (laughs) it was it was a simple project i mean we just we we got great will mang one of our great partners I mean, they came in and awesome. put some walls up, put in a unisex bathroom and a huge washing station and TVs. Air and conditioning. Key. Yeah, I guess yeah. That's, that's important too, right? Let's get yeah. that before we get tables or chairs. It's like, so, it's like seriously? <laughs> so those are the little things that, that – That's awesome. And, and you think about, you know, for us, you know, that project was a, a $275,000 project. That's – with. with with the friends and the partners that we have, that's nothing. It's, mm-hmm. it's easy for us to go out and raise those funds. That's awesome. So 
yeah, we just get to do we get to do some stuff that nobody else in the country does. So to kind of did we did we get through everything? Is there anything that you guys want anyone to know that we didn't kind of touch on before I ask a question? Always, but you know, it's it's in the right context that we go out to the community for certain needs, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think it's being in touch with uh, with our organization and finding somebody that's connected because you, you'd be surprised how many people you may know that are somehow connected in mm-hmm. the Blazer program that have been through the Honorary Commander program because uh, we are we have continued to grow uh, the, the classes that have come out of the Honorary Commander. So, um, again, it's it hasn't been as visual over the last 18 months because we haven't had any Nothing events. Been, right. uh, but um, I, I think you'll start seeing more and more, and, and it probably starts with the air show. If, right. if we can keep the momentum and get the air show uh, back in the spring, which is scheduled and it's all planned, the, the the energy that comes out of that it's just is it's, it's exponential. So and then you really start getting everybody back engaged, and yeah, you know, that's our hope. Is the heritage the, flight is my favorite. Oh, it's so cool. The yeah. four the four airplanes that fly in formation for like that represent the different yeah. time periods. Oh, and I used to live in Litchfield Park, and I could see the pilots when they did that flight when they would make the turn. It was over my house. I would sit on the front porch the days I didn't go because I went most days. <laughs> If they were practicing or whatever, I could see their faces. It was so, so cool. So Tucson, uh, Davis Mountain has their air show November 6th and 7th. So that's the barometer for us. Oh, okay. So we want to we want to see them be able to be successful and pull it off. So and November is tu- Tucson, you said, and uh-huh. then March. Correct. Is Luke. Okay. Yep. And so for, for those enthusiasts who love air shows, uh, Davis Month and uh, Thunderbirds will be down there in November. So go down, cool. go down and check it out. Very cool. Yeah. So my, my question to both of you, dealer's choice who goes first, is beyond enjoying the sound of freedom and just taking all of that in and all that that means, what do you want, if I believe we have an audience, if we have somebody that will ever listen to this, they're in probably the commercial real estate world at some level, what do you want them to know or do? So you you just hit on something when you said the sound of freedom. I, one of the easiest things that you can do is when you go register your vehicle tag is to select the Sound of Freedom license plate. That goes directly to Fighter Country Foundation. I mean, that is ongoing support without having to do anything. And, oh, by the way, it's the coolest-looking license plate <laughs> out there, right? You got, you got the Sound of Freedom with an F-35 uh, flying right in it. So it's uh, that is, like, so easy, and, and it, it creates conversation. So mm-hmm. you're driving. I can't tell you how many times, you know, I'm driving down the road, and somebody's like, what's that, you know? Mm-hmm. So it creates opportunity to talk more about it. And the more you see them, uh, the more obvious our organization becomes. And, and, uh, and then it's ongoing support. So it's an easy one. Love it. And that is – and that's – thank you for bringing that up, man. It's like out of sight, out of mind. It's, it's so many things that we do. It, it's the small things that sometimes we forget, which the license plate is not small by any way, shape, or form. It's massive. But we do so much. I, I almost I, – Shame on me. It's crazy. Danny and those guys are going to slap me in a second because I was going to forget to bring that up. Oh, my gosh. It's so okay. We got this it. Is, this is we why we have it. heroes like John got and you it. here. To, 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 because as I said earlier, it is very hard for us to include others in our mission because mm-hmm. of how we have to operate. Mm-hmm. That license plate is is the easiest way for everybody to get involved and support us. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, we got about 7,000 of those plates around the valley, and it does create conversation. It's It's fun. Um, and it's a, uh, it was a, it was a big undertaking, you know, to get those specialty plates. That, you know, you gotta you gotta write a bill, and it's gotta go through the house and go through the Senate. It's amazing. Um, so now that we've gone through that process, uh, it's it's Good something that up. we can comp- totally capitalize on. Awesome. And you're right, it is a freaking awesome plate. It it's looks, cool. It looks really cool. More capital projects? Is that the appetite still on base? Uh. Yes. So again, as you heard me say earlier, sustaining our programs and services is always priority. Right. Um, and we are reloading our gun uh, mm-hmm. to identify uh, new projects. Okay. Uh, so that when we run into a Bob Parsons or we run into a significant individual of influence, we like just a, might like have a John. If he just comes walking in, you got to yeah. be ready for Mr. Well, Pearson. Right. Not I mean, Parson Pearson. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you, know, no, you never know who. Well, it's a big deal. It's, uh, nah, it's if a if he has, different. you know, I don't know if you have seven and a half million dollars in your pocket he right does. now. No, I do. 
But for instance, why did I buy the sandwiches? I left my wallet just, at home. Depending upon who's listening to this podcast, I mean, sh- share the love. We have a seven and a half million dollar gift that's been approved to build a field house at Luke Air Force Base. What's a field house? A field house is an indoor track with a 200 meter indoor track and AstroTurf inside and retractable bleacher seating that can seat 2,200 individuals Yowza. inside air conditioning. Because guess where these airmen are running right now doing PT during the summer? Oh, let me guess. Around a football field like the high school students. An outdoor track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So in the grand scheme of things and everything that we do and the wealth that's in this state, how much is $7.5 million? It's really not that much. So we have that. If if someone wanted to write us a $7.5 million check tomorrow, they just call we you can directly? put a shovel in the ground the next day. You can... Direct message Venn Construction. We will get them in yep. touch with you. We will just take a, a nominal 10% finder's <laughs> fee. And I'm just and I, well, I can tell and you. And donate it's, it's, it back. Exactly. But I just want one of those letters. The thing, the thing that's challenging is I've seen this for six past wing commanders. They come in every two years. Every wing commander wants to enlarge and grow their fitness facility. Mm-hmm. And when they rack and stack their, their, their requests, it doesn't fall under the, the requirements that are going to get approved. Mm-hmm. So every wing commander and leadership wants this, and they can never get it. So I think the only way that it's going to ever get delivered is if we deliver it. We just got to find the cash. So and, and, we can and, do that. And every time you take away one of the negatives of you know the, the perception of Phoenix being hot, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you, d- and you now have a place where they can go that they don't have to do it outside in the summer, then it makes our base more attractive – Every time. Do we get higher caliber talent because of it? My, or is it same, same, no, with or without these amenities? I, I wouldn't know the answer to that. But, I just uh, wonder if it moves that needle. I mean, for for, uh, for civilian or for contractor, I mean, I don't sure. know. But um, at the base, I think, you know, you, you maybe for recruiting, potentially. Absolutely. Yeah, right? So I uh, – but but it makes people want to stay here or come back, yes. you know. And yes. so when they're here – The pleasant and, experience right. ahead in Phoenix. That exactly. Makes sense. Well, actually, it's a great point. Like we said earlier, we love keeping those families here. Mm -hmm. And those families, those retirees drive on the base and use the fitness facility. Mm -hmm. Imagine how much more usage that facility would get if they had a field house. Absolutely. And that's that's just one example. But but we're targeting really small ones, too, kind of like our niche or small projects. Like, for instance, uh, the kitchen inside the chapel. Uh, The chaplains on the base uh, serve about 24,000 meals outside of that facility. And... Again, same, just like the fire station. It's it's clean, mm-hmm. but it's just antiquated. Mm-hmm. So we have a, a project going through. When it's all said and done, it'll be a probably a $175,000 project. And once we get approval from the Air Force, we'll pluck it off and get it done. So it, we should add under your title... Um Real estate developer as well. No, I just br- we would know we bring in the people to do that. We'll we'll he's bring a real in. estate broker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's, he's, right he's got his hand in all. We'll use our Butler Design Group friends. We'll use our Wilming friends. We'll we'll use all of those the people who are good at that. And, Let them uh, do what they do. And then I'll go back out and try and raise money. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. There's something. Yeah. Else? No, it, it made me think of uh, the Honor Guard, and when you start, talked about how much impact they have in our community. Mm-hmm. And, and what we did to improve their facility to allow them to train and, and now, you know, continue to do more and more for outside of the, the gates of Luke Air Force Base. Yeah, and that one's not done yet. And I can tell you, uh, after our, our meeting yesterday, uh, we found out at the board meeting uh, an individual and organization donated uh, $250,000 towards that project. No way. Yeah. So it's a $1.5 million project. That is awesome. Um, and we're $500,000 into it. That's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. Very but that good. Honor Guard. Describe what we're doing. Well, so the Honor Guard, <laughs> again, what's impo- What's the mission of Luke Air Force Base? It's to train the world's greatest fighter pilots. Uh, the Honor Guard facility at Luke Air Force Base, has, it was in a 19, it was, it was in a reformed barracks. Mm-hmm. And the building was so old, they literally had to condemn certain parts of it. So they had to move the Honor Guard to another facility that's just not adequate. So they have to train outside. Uh, You will be driving down the street on July 13th, and it's 114 degrees outside, and you will see six airmen in their dress blues Mm. carrying a casket with a flag on it, training outside. Because not only do they do, uh, you know, present the colors at sporting events and you know, change of commands and retirement ceremonies. On average, they do about 600 military funerals a year. Yeah. 
And these young airmen, they're volunteers too. I didn't know them. Again, we don't know this stuff. That's a volunteer. An honor guard member, that's not a job. That's a volunteer job. So they're maintainers, they're nurses, they're firefighters, they're civil engineering, and they're honor guard members. And they're training like that. So, And they're busy. So, it, Like, for instance, on September 11th, they had six events they supported on September 11th. Six different events for a 22-person volunteer crew. So, I can't meet to six meetings in a day. <laughs> so that's the kind of messaging we get to share to people. And when you sit down with somebody and, and you present that story, how can they say no? Yeah. So. It's the least you can do. Yep. It gets really easy at that point. Yep. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you for Thank coming. Thank you. We appreciate the opportunity. We, we, we love, I mean, we could go for 56 more minutes. We, we love sharing who we are and what we do. And you because guys are great at what you do in the community, so thanks for your support. This has been fun. This yeah. is bringing yeah. people together more than we ever thought possible. We were hearing just, I saw, I saw the video. They don't even call it a podcast, right? Like, I saw the video, and so I'm hoping that we continue to bridge the gap between, I know it's a big part of your community, but I want you to be a big part of our community, if that makes sense. Yeah what you guys are doing yeah, so which we love yeah all right thank you guys thank you thank you now what do we do